Hi everyone, it's Rose Parker, and today we're going to talk about a very serious topic, which is growing up schizophrenic and the bullying that can come along with it. So I'm going to give a general trigger warning for this episode that there might be some sensitive content and that just your discretion is advised. So as if you've been following me for a while, you might know my story. My earliest memories include hallucinations and delusions, and I have exhibited schizophrenic traits and symptoms my entire life, getting diagnosed in my early 20s. Um, My therapist and I have traced my schizophrenia through my life, and we mark my prodrome, which is when schizophrenia symptoms are marked and first start showing, is starting when I was born. And going into about the age of 7 to 10, I say 7 to 10 because that time period in my life is fairly blurry. Um, I It's kind of a memory void. I have a little bit of an idea, but not much. So when I was growing up, I had a lot of issues connecting with other kids. It was easier when I was under the age of 5. I did have friends that I got along with okay in like preschool, but when I started elementary school, things were very different. I think my brain became more schizophrenic and my neurodivergent traits um, exhibited themselves more. The other kids didn't like me very much. I had a lot of trouble picking up on these social nuances. I didn't exhibit the correct body language. I didn't know the unspoken rules of society. I didn't understand how to play the way they wanted me to play. And this went through all of elementary school into middle school, and I was treated very, very poorly. I was often just tolerated as a friend, and then I would be shunned away from the group. People would ostracize me. At one point in elementary school, I remember being put on trial by the other girls in the group where they told me all the things I had done wrong to them and humiliated me. At one point, a girl lifted up my skirt and exposed my underwear to another child to make fun of me for sitting with my legs open during small, during circle time. Um, kids would often push me away physically, physically reject me, shove me away because they didn't want me around them because I didn't play right. Um, I remember in fifth grade, I was very sick. The teacher didn't like me. She, she didn't think I, she seemed to, even though I was very academic and I cared a lot about class, she didn't think I cared because I was very sick, I was I have chronic physical illnesses. She didn't like me, she didn't like my personality. And I had left to go to the bathroom several times during that morning science class, I believe. And she stopped me from going to the bathroom a fourth time, I believe. And I ended up vomiting heavily and uncontrollably into the sink as she was stopping me from going to the bathroom. And everyone in class just stared at me with grossed out looks on their face, including the teacher, and no one tried to help me. The only person who expressed any care or concern about me was a girl who I am still friends with. Well, we weren't friends at the time. We became friends in high school. Who said, is Rose okay? And people had looked at her like she had grown a second head. A lot of this is from her memory, not mine. Um... And the teacher just sent me to the high school, to the um, nurse with a sort of disgusted look on her face. And kids told that story for years to come um, in our school to try and gross out younger kids and continue to humiliate me. And anyway, trying to think. I was just generally treated like I didn't belong, like no one wanted me. I remember one year running for a position in class office and I was the only person that voted for me. And when I expressed upsetness at this, everyone told me to get over it and I was treated very coldly by the teacher and the class. This was in second grade. And this 
I was the class punching bag, basically. I remember in fifth grade, I was in a severe, I was in a car accident, and I developed severe pain as a result from it. it would, the, I would later learn that this had triggered my fibromyalgia, and I was developing issues from that. I was developing issues in my cervical spine, but I missed a lot of school, and every time I would show up to school, just lots of random kids in the grade would tell me about how they thought I was going to be held back and they thought I was lying and skipping school. Kids told me to kill myself. They told me that I was fat, that I was ugly. They told me that they thought I was worthless. Like, you've heard me talk about the ideas that I had about myself. And a lot of it came from this bullying. And all this time, I was, halluc I was psychotic. I was hallucinating. And I think that this just... This environment of of hatred and rejection worsened my psychosis and caused it to go from prodromal schizotypy into full-blown schizophrenia. Because we do know that social defeat, social rejection, can be a trigger for schizophrenia and psychosis. And for me, I, I was unwanted at school. I didn't have any real friends. Um, my mother was mentally ill and unstable. My dad was disabled and working very hard at a, at a very demanding job in Washington, D.C. And I felt like I had no one. I felt like I didn't belong. I mean, is it any wonder I first considered suicide at age 10? But as I came into my teenage years, or starting around age 12, I was the first girl in the grade to develop breasts. I entered puberty overnight, going into sort of B, borderline C breast cup. I start, was one of the first girls in the grade to get her period. Uh, this came with all sorts of harassment. I was sexually harassed for years. I developed eating disorder issues, which just got me more harassment, and I was mocked out people. Someone started a rumor I had liposuction after I lost weight from anorexia. And people and people would take my things and hold them out of reach. I'm very short. People would write things, nasty things about me on whiteboards in high school. And then the teachers would erase them but not do anything. During PE, people would throw balls at my chest on purpose, at my breasts, or in my face on purpose. That was a common one. It was just, I think, it, I think it's part of what created my paranoid ideation. Because if you're const, if you're spending, you know, six, seven hours a day, and then I was often after school for hours at a time, because I was in a robotics club and I was bullied there by some of the boys there too. And if you're spending hours at a time surrounded by people that honestly act like they hate you, because and you can't figure out what on earth you've done to deserve it, because you're just being who you are, um, you're going to get paranoid, because every, it seems like everything you do ticks someone off. It seems like everything is wrong. Everything, something about you seems to offend them, and... You don't know what it is, so you've got to watch out. Your survival instincts go off. And I think that's where my paranoid ideation came from. Because I was always on guard for looking for someone's going to shove me into the wall. And it just... I think, I think the interplay between schizophrenia and psychosis in general and trauma is very interesting. And I've, I haven't really read anything about the interplay between schizophrenia and bullying, but I would kind of like to see any something written about it. If anyone knows it, please send it my way. Excuse me, I'm going to get a drink of water. Because that chronic sense of threat and that you aren't welcome in an environment that's supposed to be safe, I think it can create paranoia. It can't, and I mean, if you're constantly looking for threats, might your eyes create them in the form of, say, shadow people? You know, so I think it's very possible, but, and then the self-beliefs that come with bullying, that you're worthless, that you're 
that your life's meaningless. You know, those could potentially turn into negative symptoms or of schizophrenia. Do, think think about it, you know, if you don't believe you're worth anything, could that translate into abolition? Could that translate into hygiene issues? Could those sort of be sublimated into negative symptoms? I don't know. I'd love to hear what you all think about this. But those years of bullying were very key to my cognitive formation. And it's taken a lot of work in therapy and on my own to come out of them and pull myself into a strong self-esteem self -esteem and strong self-concept. And sometimes I do think about it and it does still haunt me. And it stopped around 11th grade, but you know, 10, I guess 11 if you count, 11 counting kindergarten, you know, 11 years of just being treated like absolute trash by by so many people around me, it's just, and a haunting is just all I can say to describe it, and it really did mess with my mind in, in an extraordinary way. Anyway, I will talk to you all later, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the issue in the Instagram comments, and I will see you all later. Bye.